Every single church in existence works out of one of two operating systems. You can either work out of a human-centered operating system, or you can work out of a Holy Spirit-centered operating system. A Holy Spirit operating system is an organism. A human-centered operating system is an organization. We get to choose which one we're going to participate in, and we choose it through the way that we operate within the church. We choose it through our leadership structures. We choose it through how we organize worship on Sunday. We choose it through how we shepherd the congregation. I'm going to walk through some key differences between a human-centered church operating system and a Holy Spirit-centered church operating system that I hope will shed some light on how things are where you worship and what things could become. And I hope this inspires you. The first thing that we notice about Holy Spirit operating systems is that the Holy Spirit works through direction. Human-centered operating systems work through decisions. When humans get together, we make decisions. When the Spirit shows up, the Spirit gives directions. There's a big difference. We like to micromanage the Holy Spirit through decision-making processes, but what the Spirit's most interested in is giving us a direction and for us to be faithful moving in that direction. And then you'll begin to notice that the kind of decisions that you have to make to pursue the Holy Spirit-given direction begin to align. A Holy Spirit-centered church is a church of dependence, fasting and prayer, total surrender, God's in charge, we are not. A man-centered operating system for church says we're a culture of independence. We know how to make the decisions. We have the funding. We can do it on our own. We really don't need much of God's help. We have this. No one would ever say it out loud, but it's how people act. The next characteristic is technology versus theology. In the human operating system of church, we find a heavy emphasis on technology. We have a check-in system to make sure we understand who's there and who wasn't. We're keeping up with them. You miss a couple times, you're going to get a letter. That's technology doing the work of theology. That's electronics doing the spiritual work for the shepherds of the congregation. But a Holy Spirit-centered church doesn't focus on technology to solve all of our problems and to keep us comfortable. A Holy Spirit-driven church operates on a solid theology that God has given us the answers to the problems that we see, and we're going to use God's solutions to address the problems rather than create technological comfort zones that buffer us and insulate us from the work that God has called us to do. Shadon K. Johnson had a couple of shifts that he said that the church needs to make, and I think it falls exactly into this idea. Here are some of the ones that he shared. He said there has to be a shift from professional to ordinary. The professional mindset is the humanistic mindset. The ordinary mindset is the Holy Spirit mindset. That does not mean that the Holy Spirit does not use professional people. It just means that if you look at the whole of what the Spirit is doing, the Holy Spirit does not rely on professionals to get all the work done. The modern church today in a human-centered operating system relies on professionals to get the work done rather than the Holy Spirit to provide the gifts amongst a wide array of people within the body to get the work done. We need to shift from professional to ordinary. Then he says we have to move from slow to fast. And if you know human operating systems within the church, they move very slowly because they're not Holy Spirit empowered and they're not Holy Spirit informed. And so we wrangle and wrangle and wrangle and wrangle over decisions. And as soon as you make a decision and someone complains about your decision, you wrangle and wrangle and wrangle and wrangle about the complaint and change the decision. It's agonizing, agonizing, telling you from experience. A Holy Spirit operated church operates a lot more quickly because the Holy Spirit is going in advance of us, preparing the way, preparing hearts, changing cultures, changing communities, changing churches, changing people's lives. And we step into that rather than say like, it might take this church a zillion years to change this community, but the Holy Spirit can do it in a week. We got to get on board with what the Spirit's doing. The Spirit can move much more quickly than we can. Human-centered enterprises are often th thought of in terms of one generation, Holy Spirit organisms work multi-generationally. Think Acts 2, this promise of the Spirit, he says, is for you, for your children, for all who are far off. It's multi-generational. The Holy Spirit can take and multiply and reproduce multi-generations and has done so for thousands of years. But human endeavors tend to be a one-generation process, maybe at best two, and then people start falling off. We're seeing that today, the generational drop-off. It's because we have not relied on the Spirit to be our operating system and our source of direction. Instead, we've replaced the Spirit with the programs of people, and they fail miserably. 
Now we have expensive versus cheap. Have you ever noticed that in the Bible, all these things God tells us to do are basically free? But somehow in church land, there's outrageously huge budgets to get these kinds of things done. That could be done on a grassroots level. Prayer is free. Bible study lessons are free. Sermons are free. Serving the poor is basically free aside from materials. You don't need professional people to do all that. Man-centered enterprises are very, very, very expensive. Lots of overhead. But Holy Spirit-centered enterprises are very inexpensive. Acts 8. They were persecuted and they scattered and churches just sprung up everywhere, not because they had huge budgets, but because the Holy Spirit went with them and helped them. Next, we have spectator versus participant. In human programmatic systems, we often end up with a lot of people spectating while a few people do the work. The Pareto's principle, the 80-20 rule. But in Holy Spirit-driven enterprises, we end up with a lot more participants as people begin to realize their Holy Spirit-given gifts and begin to leverage those for the good of the body, the church body. Next, we have centralized versus decentralized. As human beings running human organizations, we tend to want to centralize things. We tend to want to take control and authority and ownership and branding and pull everything under our umbrella and roof rather than decentralize, raise up leaders and give them away. Watch the power just be given away. It does not come natural to our human endeavor, but it's natural to the Spirit. The Spirit decentralizes things, spreads things out, and then more things grow. The next is doing versus catalyzing. In human endeavors, we work through addition. We do, 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 do. One plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one. In Holy Spirit-operated churches, they work through multiplication and exponents. Exponential growth the Holy Spirit can give. Jesus says the sower goes out and sows seed, and sometimes a hundred times what was sown was given back. That's not how humans work. That's how God works. Just like he says, he says, I watered, uh, he says, I sowed the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. Exponential growth is only the work of God. If you kick God out of the equation, we're only going to get one plus one. Sometimes we're going to get one minus one. Sometimes we're going to get one minus ten. It's what we're seeing in the Western church today. The next is the priority on the saved versus the priority on the lost. Human endeavored churches, programmatic churches that are not Holy Spirit led, tend to put a priority on the saved because you need those bodies to fill those volunteer vacancies within that programmatic approach. And you need those bodies with those checkbooks and online giving to be able to make budget. So the priority is very focused on the saved and how the saved are doing and if they're okay or if they're upset. But in a Holy Spirit endeavor, we have a huge emphasis on the lost. How are we going to reach them? What's it going to take? How uncomfortable are we going to get? It's okay. Do it anyway. It's what God said to do. So these are some of the differences between Holy Spirit driven organism church and man centered organizational programmatic church. Where do you find your church within this mix? Would you say it's a man-centered enterprise or would you say it's a Holy Spirit-centered enterprise? Is it an organization or is it an organism? And how do you know? And what would it take to move, if your church is an organization, to move back into being an organism? I do not think there is any way to cross that bridge without repentance. And the Holy Spirit will help convict us of that if we need to. Hey, if you like the video, hit subscribe, hit like, watch another one. I'm going to put another one up here on the screen about the Holy Spirit. Hope you watch it. And you'll have a wonderful day. Take care.